The mountain is also home to pine tree forests and cedar tree forests, which is called Az Rab, which translates to the cedars of God. And observe how the mountain looks separate from the floor. El Arez isn't a continuous mound of rock and dirt that slopes to the ground. Instead, El Arez extends downwards like you see on tree roots at the base of a tree. There is so much dumb with this, it's hard to figure out where to start. But since I attempt to address claims directly, I'll do my best here. The supposed difference between Mount Lebanon and the ground surrounding it is dirt. Dirt does not stay on mountains because mountains are steep and dirt falls off of them. There is no other visual difference. If there is one, please describe it better. This also has a flat top or mesa. Mesa meaning table. Table of the giants? Oh, for God's sake. In nature, with erosion from wind and rain, you would not get a level top like a tabletop. You would get an irregular and rough pattern where rock becomes loose and gives way. Mesa, Butte, and Plateau formations are well-defined and understood geologic phenomenon. Their unique shape arises from erosion occurring at a greater speed in the surrounding geology than for the now standing structure. The loose soil is eroded faster than the well-compacted mesa. In this case, Mount Lebanon is still standing because it is less prone to erosion than what surrounds it. Mount Lebanon is still eroding, just not very fast. So a flat top implies some form of cutting or sawing. The coloration is also similar to a tree trunk and can be distinguished from the plain below. Hmm. Really makes you think. Are you telling me these are drastically different colors? How the fuck are you seeing that? A few minutes later. We have monasteries here that were built in the 1600s, so over 400 years ago. My uncles have worked in them and have first-hand knowledge of giant bones being discovered in them years ago. Huh? What are you? What? Until the church came and took them away. Like whenever they discover giant bones in the US, a team from the Smithsonian group comes by and hauls them away. Exciting claim you make. Cannot wait to see all the evidence you present. Smithsonian. Smith is code for Mason. Both the church and the Smithsonian's are hoarders of true knowledge of our world, sharing the same allegiance. Dude, I don't get it. I don't get it either. Let's take a look inside the monastery of Adisha. This is a black slab from the roof of the cave. It has a painting on it, which looks familiar. Does it remind you of anything? To me, it looks like the beginning of the seed, like cedar, seed of life symbol. It also looks like the cross section of a pomegranate fruit. Could this be where they got the real star of David from? From the bottom of a ripe pomegranate fruit? So I'm off to Burger King. And here is the actual tomb where the giant bones were found. Notice the tiny and only entrance. This was so that he could defend himself from trespassers. If that is the only entrance, how the fuck did he get in there? That hole looks small for a human, let alone a giant capable of cutting down mountain-sized trees. For the next 10 or so minutes, shit really goes off the conspiracy theory rails. I'm skipping most of it, but I just have to show you this gem real quick. Just a note here, Kadash sounds like it might be related to the Kadashians or the Kardashians. KK, Kim Kardashian, Khloe Kardashian, the KKs. This is probably why these vile creatures are pushed into the news every day as a symbol for the KK. The Kardashians are likely candidates to be transsexual and androgynous, like the Freemasons coveted Bapho goat. What the fuck was that? I know, right? Now back to the show! Another random thought about Pagan Christmas is that it is centered around trees and decorating them in materialistic rubbish while hiding the true essence of trees and their true nature, power and purpose of them in our world. The Christmas tree with the star on top, or the northern star, is a representation of our old world. The decorations are meant to be the fruit, and the gifts under the tree are meant to be the blessings of life, to provide food and shelter for all life on earth. 
Sorry to burst your bubble, bud, but Christmas trees are not nearly as deep and thought-provoking as you think. The history of the Christmas tree is about what you would imagine it to be. People putting shit on a dead tree to celebrate Christmas. The first recorded Christmas tree appears to be from around 1500. Ever since then, people have been hanging crap on them because it looks nice and it's fun. There's no grand conspiracy here. However, one thing people should be aware of, we should use live trees. Trees with their roots intact, not cut trees. Cut trees represent the giant trees that they cut. So by having cut trees in our homes at Christmas has us unwittingly giving our blessings to this horrid act. Live trees, trees that we should plant after Christmas, add beautiful trees to our plane instead of subtracting them from it. So families should stand outside during Christmas next to a tree to keep Satan and the Smithsonian Institute from thinking that we are okay with giants cutting down trees thousands of years ago. Go on. That's it. What the hell do you see in him? Notice how similar the tree looks to the tower card in the tarot deck, at the bottom of which looks like a tree. Notice the base is among the clouds, just like El Arez looks like this base and is among the clouds. A Christmas tree, this tower tarot card, and this mountain do not look alike in any way. And even if they did, it is not in any way evidence that mountains were once trees, or that giants cut them down, or that giants exist, or that the world is flat. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. <laughs>